Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, if only they were holding it now, I'd be all right. What was that? What was that? I won, but they weren't holding it. Oh, I see. Do you understand that at all? Okay, who ordered the kosher meal? Uh, you've been on this flight. I was on a flight a couple of weeks ago uh, with a pilot. I'd ordered a kosher meal, and his name was Captain Neil Weintraub. And during the whole flight, his wife stood right behind him in the cockpit yelling, Turn left to the next cloud! <laughs> I kid Tommy, and uh, now you know why. Uh, but he's the only guy I know who follows Canadian football. <laughs> I, I shouldn't be cruel. I should not be cruel because Tommy had, as I said before, had a tragic childhood. He, he didn't have any friends. As a kid, he used to spend all his time playing seek. <laughs> I noticed in the newspaper today is an anniversary. Probably none of you are aware of this. It is the 10th anniversary of the death of the discoverer of Ventura Boulevard, uh, Al Ventura. Uh, he found it. Al, Al found it in 1840, and he knew he was in California because he started crossing the road on foot, and a cattle stampede stopped and waited for him to get to the other side. You see, out here in California, it's, uh, that does need a little explanation. Yes. Those of you from out of town, have you noticed the pedestrian out here has the right of way over anybody? If you're crossing in a car, the car must stop. Matter of fact, if you see somebody in a building <laughs> coming down in the elevator and you know they're coming across the street, you have to stop. <laughs> anyway, tonight I welcome you to, uh, to Burbank. We, Ed says every night from Hollywood, we're in Burbank. Lovely community. I've recommended a place for your dining pleasure many times after the show. I suggest you go there tonight. They're having a kind of a holiday special. It's uh, Vinny of Brutzi's Little Touch of Newark. It's a, <laughs> it's a rough place. I was over there the other day, and the waiter says, we're closing early due to a fire in the kitchen. I said, when was the fire? He said, Vinny should be starting it any time. <laughs> uh, Vinny is in a little trouble with the law. Ever since they found the speed bump in the parking lot with his former partner. <laughs> Say, uh, late breaking news bulletin you probably have, and you'll probably see it in the paper tomorrow. Poppin' Fresh, the uh, Pillsbury Doughboy, just got hit with a palimony suit from Mr. Bill. <laughs> <laughs> We're living in a strange country, I right? was oh. thinking all day today, I wonder who'll get custody of the candelabra. You just don't know. Uh, those of you from out of state, did you realize we had two earthquakes here last night? No. Ah, you see, I did not realize it. This morning, there was one about 3 o'clock this morning. Anybody feel that one? And, uh... Registered another one about an hour later. Registered 5.3 on the Richter scale. Where were you uh, about four this morning? In my bed. Did you feel it? No. How many really knew that there was an earthquake? All right. Do you know what science is doing now? How they're determining when earthquakes are coming? They are testing cockroaches. <laughs> I'm not making it up. Seismologists are studying cockroaches who are apparently super sensitive to earth movement. And it's very painstaking uh, research. The way it works is, uh, <laughs> these scientists intently observe a group of cockroaches for 24 hours a day until they see one of the cockroaches turn to another and say, Earthquake. <laughs> it's more scientific than that, but that's a basic uh, summation. I understand today the Department of Employment just found a job for Ronald Reagan Jr., uh, Ent entertaining on the cheese and cracker line. <laughs> I'm still stunned at that 
a news item on the paper yesterday about the wedding in Korea. Did you read that? The largest wedding in the history of the world? Presided over by Reverend uh, Sun Myung Moon. He married 5,800 couples at the same time. What's that come to? To, to 11,000? How many? Well, that's a lot of people. Uh, <laughs> you imagine? 5,200. He said, I now pronounce you man and wife. Duck, here comes the rice. <laughs> And he said, you now may kiss the bride. And the whole country of Korea today is one large hickey. <laughs> what you say? Well, what's happening politically? Uh, apparently nobody watched the president's speech the other night, which I find very strange. It was on national television. Out here in California, we have a, a race for governor between uh, Duke, Duke Magian and uh, you know who he's running against? Yeah, Bradley. And Duke Magian today threatened to really play his trump card. He's going to leak it to the press that Tom Bradley is... <laughs> now, here in the valley, we have a... We have another guy running, not the same one. Nuke, Nuke Magian. <laughs> who is a really law... An order candidate, and he caused uh, quite a stir today in the gay community with his tough new law, order moose, get the noose. <laughs> so, very, tough. very tough law. Well, there's one nice item in the paper. Today is Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher's birthday uh, of England, and they asked her what she would like for her birthday, and she said a week in the Bahamas with Prince Andrew. <laughs> We have a good show tonight. One of the funniest women I have ever known in my life. Joan Rivers is here. <laughs> and a lovely lady whom I have not met yet, but is uh, Japan's reigning star on television. She does three different television shows in Japan. She is with us tonight, and I hope I pronounce her name right. Her name is Tetsuko Kuro Yogani. Yonaji. What? Yonaji. Yonaji. Yes. Yonaji. Kuro Yunaji. Thank you, Ed. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to say it again for me. Tetsuko? Tetsuko Koro Yanaji. Koro Yanaji. <laughs> Arigato. <laughs> Hi. Luckily, we both saw Shogun. <laughs> okay, that, well, I don't think I have anything else to say right at this moment, but I, I will after this, so stay where you are. We'll be all right. <laughs> we welcome one of our new sponsors, the John Hancock Companies. Thank you, Tommy. Tommy Olsen, on NBC. Yes, thank you. Recently, this network broadcast an editorial in which our station, WXYZZ, came out against hunters being allowed to indiscriminately kill animals in the forest. As you know, it is the policy of this station to invite qualified spokesmen to speak in rebuttal. Here tonight, with an opposing view in favor of hunters, is Mr. Floyd R. Turbo, Mr. Turbo. My name is Floyd R. Turbo, American. <laughs> this commie station says we should not kill innocent animals in the woods. This raises the question, kiss my ammo. <laughs> Hunting is a challenge against superior odds. The deer has its cunning, its speed, its camouflage. All we have is a 12-bore shotgun and a Chevy pickup. <laughs> 
Hunting is as much a sport as bowling. Only in hunting, the pin spotter gets killed and eaten. <laughs> Hunters are self-reliant. Believe me, when you're walking through a forest, you have to look out for number one and number two. <laughs> Hunting is much more than just killing animals. It's also sitting around a roaring campfire with your buddies until somebody's beer can melts to his fly. <laughs> Many great Americans have been hunters, like Daniel Boone, Teddy Roosevelt, and the guy who zapped Bambi's mother. <laughs> People say we enjoy terrifying defenseless creatures, cornering them and firing guns at them. This is wrong. They left out driving around with them tied to your fender and drooling on your hubcaps. <laughs> I live for the great outdoors. <laughs> the fresh air and the sound of a coyote howling at my moon. <laughs> the do-gooders say deer should not be killed because they are cute and defenseless. Bull shish kebab. <laughs> Deers are dangerous to hunters. How would you like to be in the woods at night and have something big and horny sneak up behind you? <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I love animals. I always have. When I was a little boy, I remember getting my first teddy bear. I got him right between the eyes. <laughs> On TV, they make such a big deal out of endangered species. If endangered species are such a big deal, how come you never see any of them around? <laughs> These bleeding heart liberals make me sick. They ought to put their mouth where my money is. <laughs> talk of controlling our weapons. I, for one, don't want to get frisked when I enter a park. I have a constitutional right to bulge if I want to. <laughs> they say hunters are sick. You try getting up at four in the morning, drink a case of beer, then bounce around in a jeep with nine bad-smelling dudes in wool jackets, you'd be sick too. <laughs> I only kill in self-defense. What would you do if a rabbit pulled a knife on you? <laughs> but I love nature. It is fun to stand on the edge of a mountain cliff at sunrise and hear your voice echo across the valley like this. As the good book says, there's a time to laugh and a time to cry, and a time to blow away a squirrel with a Teflon dum-dum. Remember, if God didn't want man to hunt, he wouldn't have given us plaid shirts. Thank you. Welcome back. Thank you. Thanks, Drew. Tonight, how are you great. feeling? Terrific. That Somebody... was a great turbo. That's I like the best Floyd ever. R. He <laughs> really is American, isn't he? <laughs> he really has perceived things in a, in a good light. Uh, somebody sent this to us uh, just about the week before we had our 20th anniversary show, and I was going to read it because you start thinking of time passing by. This is a column that's been around apparently for a long time, but uh, I think Dear Abby printed in the Los Angeles Times, and it has to do when you're getting a little bit over. Have you seen, older? Have you seen this? No. How to tell when you're over the hill? And it gives you certain things mm -hmm. to look for. One, everything hurts, and what doesn't hurt doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, does that say it? <laughs> you need your glasses to find your glasses. Yeah. Your back goes out more than you do. <laughs> 
Here's my favorite. Your little black book contains only names that end in M.D. <laughs> you have too much room in the house and not enough in your medicine cabinet. Your children begin to look middle-aged. That hurts. Here's one that anybody of a certain age will empathize with. The policemen look too young to be policemen. Did you ever see that? Mm -hmm. I mean, they look like they're brownie scouts. Yeah, that's right. The little gray-haired woman you help across the street is your wife. <laughs> the last one is you can't take yes for an answer. That's beautiful. Just, you know, some of those. This is the latest copy of Los Angeles Magazine. And look who's on the what cover. What a cover. Look at that. Take a shot. Look who's on the cover. That's a nice picture. She, Joan always talks about being, you know... Unglamorous. That's very glamorous. That's very glamorous. She'll be going to be headlining at the Riviera Hotel from October 31st to uh, November the 3rd. Then she'll be with uh, David Brenner. They've been appearing in concert throughout the country. They will be in the Arena Theater in Houston, Texas from the 5th of November through the 7th. And then back in Long Island at the Westbury Music Theater from the 8th through the 14th. So would you welcome Miss Joan Rivers. <laughs> now, okay, now you see... I need the stupid thing. You need the little stool? You see what's happening now? It's going to be... It'll be Vogue next, Harper's sure, Bazaar, sure. Mademoiselle. Yeah, that's been retouched. Is there a little retouching a on this? A little retouching. <laughs> what? Shot through linoleum. A little retouching. The picture was shot through linoleum. <laughs> Nothing's there except my eyes and my nostrils. <laughs> do they know what you're talking about when you say shot through linoleum? Please. When they do movies sometimes, or even television, the, the cameraman would shoot the, through little gauze or something to kind of soften the face. and You give hope. It a, you hope. This was through linoleum. Linoleum. Huh? It just said, way where you are. Think like that. That, oh, oh, I mean, come yeah. on now. Oh, I've had it. Please, you know, I'm getting so old. Oh, come, come on. on. You look oh, very the lowest. stunning oh, tonight. Please. Come on now. now. This is a friend of mine, maybe, so he's going to make a snoo to go over it. I mean, it's just. <laughs> like, I've had it, Joe. Oh, come on. I went for lunch today. The waiter gave me a carafe of estrogen. I mean, that tells you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so wrinkled. A tennis ball got stuck on my cheek. I mean, it is just, it's had it. God has fixed me. It's going down here. Going. And I went to the doctor. I said, what should I do with all the liver spots? He said, wear green. There is, there's just no... <laughs> there's an ad on television. That, it's funny. We were talking about it yesterday. This, we won't mention the product. No. But it's funny. And you put it on. Right. And it takes away those ugly brown spots. And then the guy says... If I can remember it. I have no names because we may get sued. It says, now, it won't work overnight. But if you use it, eventually they will disappear. Now, eventually could be you could be in a hospital in a terminal tent, right? And you're dying. Yes, but look at that white hand. I mean, what is that? Eventually they will disappear. I mean, that's, oh, that's a long time. That means they're lying. That's what <laughs> I didn't means. say that. Are you scrubbing that damn thing? It's coming off. You. Oh, no, you don't have any. Uh... Well, that's because. I, well, I hope not yet. Give me a break. Something should be left. I mean, that's that's it. You don't trust doctors generally, anyway, do you? Well, I don't like doctors with senses of humor. Oh, you yeah, see, my right. father is a and doctor. And they all are young. They're all young again. They're young, well, young and smart ass. Yeah. I shouldn't say, you know, you know yes, I'm like, uh, I said to the doctor the other day, I had a bad cloak because the flu was going around in California, you know, yeah. I said, I guess the reason I've got the flu, it's going around. My doctor says, yes, yeah, so is Warren Beatty, you don't have him. I don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need that. Doctors are so small. Edgar has a proctologist during the exam, he says, turn the other cheek. I mean, I just, I just you know, my gynecologist goes, there are my car keys. I mean, don't... <laughs> Well, I suppose, I suppose in a job like that, they have oh. to keep your sense of humor <laughs> all the time. I had one, I was giving birth to Melissa, the doctor took a rubber glove, but here's a farmer, look what he's doing. I mean, like, milk in the cow. I don't need that. They take your thermometer, you're down a quart. I mean, just examine me. And I've been with doctors a lot because my cousin died. I shouldn't make a joke. No. Ralph, you know, I had my, I didn't know that. my gay cousin in San Francisco. Your gay cousin? Yeah, just just passed away? Passed away. Oh. And God, you know what's funny, God? Very religious. What? <laughs> yeah. Before he died, he rewrote the Bible in his version. 
<laughs> Never been. Let me know when you're ready. Let me know when I can look back. Now, as I understand it so far, your gay cousin died in San Francisco, and before he died, he rewrote the Bible. Yes. What was his version? <laughs> the forbidden fruit was called Danny. The forbidden fruit was called Danny. <laughs> no, that's not too difficult, is it? Once you start it, get, well, let us take a break here and compose yourself. <laughs> we'll be right back. We got you tonight, didn't we? We're back with Joan Rivers. I must say publicly, you always compliment me on this show, telling you that you owe so much to The Tonight Show and so forth. To I, you, not I, to The Tonight Show, I, to you. I came over the other, well, a couple of weeks ago to see you at the improvisation. I had not seen you in concert for a while, and you were absolutely brilliant. Well, I've never laughed so hard in my please. life in a club at anyone, I don't believe. Thank you, but I was so nervous because you yeah. were there. Oh, you, oh, you should be. You were you were the first one to tell me I was crying. I was crying. I was crying. Anyway, Get her off. this cover here, this, <laughs> this cover on Los Angeles Magazine gives me the impression, because it has to do with who to call when you're having house problems, the yeah. plumbers, painters, carpenters, that you are aware of all these things and you... I'm aware I don't do them. You don't do these no, things. No, I'm aware who to call. Oh, I see. I don't care. Oh, please. He loses the button, so up the hole. I don't kill myself. Oh, no. <laughs> Kid wants a milkshake, kip a, trip a cow, or, or kip a cow. I don't, I don't kill myself. I, God wants different people to do different things. Yeah. Also, I'm from Beverly Hills. Yeah. And Beverly Hills, the women are just different. You know, it's a, it's a very strange society here. A friend of mine was arrested. And they said, you're allowed one phone call until they, they throw you in your cell. She called her interior decorator. I mean, it's just a different kind of world. It's just a different attitude out here. It's too laid back, don't you think? Mellow, mellow yeah. laid back. New yeah. York, I could see a, a guy, like a, 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 what do you call it, a flasher. The women would scream. Yes, and Melissa and I walking down the street, we see a flasher. The ladies got their little um, broadery hoops. They were playing ring toss. I mean, it's just like, you know, that's it. <laughs> Way back. It is a whole different thing. Yeah. And everybody out here is a tramp. See, that's what I don't get. Cal New York, where I was brought up, there were certain people. Were and my friend Heidi Abramowitz. Well, you talk about Heidi uh, Abramowitz all the time. Now, how do you know? What do you mean she's a tramp? <laughs> what do I mean she was a tramp? A tramp. Her bedroom was known as the OK Corral. I <laughs> Well, I mean, she might have been flirtatious. Uh, her legs were in the air more than Lindbergh. I mean, I don't get <laughs> A loose lady, eh? Uh, but it wasn't just... See, I was the good girl in Larchmont High School. There were a lot of tramps in my class. We had one girl named Horizontal Helen. Horizontal Helen. <laughs> had nothing to do with geometry. It was, then we had a girl named... Eggs Goldberg. Eggs Goldberg. They, her real name was Iris. They called her Eggs because she went over easy. It was... <laughs> Your class was replete with bad ladies, weren't they? And then there was a girl named Brenda who he liked all, like, used to sleep, can I say sleep around? Mm -hmm. Used to sleep around with 70, 80 year old men. Oh. Yeah. And they used to call her the Pop Tart. And it was. <laughs> Weren't there any nice girls in your class? Just or me. just enough for this? Just, just <laughs> Were you naive? Were you oh, naive? Oh, I was stupid. I knew nothing. Well, there's a difference between naive and being stupid. It's my mother's fault. Didn't she tell you when you were... Did your mother tell you the facts of life? Well, come to think of it, I guess not. But I'm a little older than you are. And, oh, and thank you. People felt more... They didn't feel comfortable, I think. Oh. Parents nowadays, I think, are a little more direct with their kids. My mother, nothing. Oh. My, my wedding, I should bring along something black and sexy. I took Diana Roth. I knew absolutely <laughs> nothing. Well, you see, you misread that whole thing. <laughs> Sitting on the edge of the bed going, now what, puff, puff? And it's just... Um... Did she tell you at all about... Usually, the scene you see in motion pictures is a mother calls the daughter in and says, now you're through wedding night and gives... Advice and all she told me was man gets on top, woman gets on the bottom. I bought bunk beds. I knew absolutely nothing. Zero. And he, you know. Wasn't and, Edgar a help? Please. Oh, I'm I sorry. think I'm the first live woman he ever had. You want to know something? <laughs> He never said so. But on my wedding night, he kept trying to blow me up. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> well, uh, it's just, and mothers should tell their daughters the best. And like, see, I have to be a great mother with Melissa. Knock on wood, because she's a fabulous kid. You know, yeah. so I should knock on. I'm not that superstitious. Are you superstitious? I'm not. No, but if I have, if I'm walking down the street and I see a ladder, oh. I'll walk around it. You know, yeah. rather than going under. So yeah. I guess, well, yeah. I have a couple. D I never see Gone with the Wind with a slave. I truly, yeah. Good. That's good. Good. Don't ever spit in a fan. You know, there's certain basic things. <laughs> <laughs> Don't bob for apples with. There's certain things. Oh, grow up. It's just. Oh, grow up. It is just... <laughs> now, look, you were talking. I'm not superstitious, though. Yeah. I'm not... <laughs> It's like out here, they're into out here, they're into everything. They're out into super. Uh, Astrology is very big out here now. You believe that? No, well, I don't, but that's typical of a Gemini. It is just. <laughs> <laughs> of course, that's right. I don't believe. Um, some friend of mine waited to conceive a child so the child would be compatible in the month with her. You know what I'm saying? No, sure. Yeah. See, I, I just, uh, well, I, I could see Melissa because I, I gave up the coil. It was that simple. Oh, well, no, please. You, ever, you coiled out there? <gasps> you sit on the bed, you bounce right off. I mean, it's crazy. You go, hey, get away from me. I mean, it's... <laughs> but I'm a good mother now. My kid's going to be 14, John. I can't believe me. Yeah. Into dogs now, dogs and pets. Dogs and horses and pets. Yeah, does she, does she mean she jumps? Or she's she, in the she horseback while she jumps. Yeah. You know, we bought her a horse, the Gimp. It's, it was an old race horse. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason the guy at the start they'd scream, "It was coming!" That horse was just. <laughs> <laughs> now you've talked about oh. your. <laughs> yeah, you you got in trouble. I mean, a lot of times. That was a joke. <laughs> you were talking about. Good, that take, takes us off the hook here. Thank God. Uh, you were talking about stewardesses once, and you were putting them down a little Tramps. bit. Tramps. Well, no, you said. <laughs> You seem to think that all girls, if they were beautiful, yes. you know, did not have any smarts. We're stupid. Can we talk for a second? And sure. After... I have no place Let to go. Talk. I'm here. <laughs> if I think God divides. Yeah. I truly believe this. I think if God makes, if he gives you something like a talent, yeah. he takes something else away. I think things are very evenly divided. I think if he makes you gorgeous, 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 he makes you stupid, stupid. I <laughs> oh, yeah, yes, yes. The most beautiful girls are showgirls. Did you ever what? talk to a showgirl, John? Not, no, no. Oh, uh, not, not since you're married. I mean, I mean, oh, that's right. I mean, before you were married. Yeah, between. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, I you, know. <laughs> you better get a showgirl and not say to her, spell MGM backward, quick. <laughs> Parallel. I had a showgirl say to me, how come my brother has two sisters, I only have one? I mean, they just... <laughs> Think that's see, I used to be very jealous of yeah. people that really were rich. Really? I think, money important. Oh, money is wonderful, you always yeah. think. But I think if God gives you a lot of bucks, I think he makes you ugly. Oh, you stop and think the most rich women are about Christina Onassis. Did you ever oh, oh. Uh, 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 uh. Here, here. Oh, here. Here's things she's a bow wow. Not an attractive girl? Her, ma her major in college was begging and fetching a bow. <laughs> this girl, you ever meet her? She I has know. hair. She uses cream rinse on her chest. I never saw... I mean, <laughs> the girl has to be prepped for a tattoo. It is <laughs> not pretty. Not pretty. She uses deodorant on her forehead. This girl is not pretty. I didn't know that. And yet, sex appeal. Yeah. Married three times, which is, well, you know, yeah. I have no sex appeal. Oh, oh now you keep oh, saying we... that. Oh, look at this cover. What are you talking about? It's been retouched. We discussed that. Yeah. But if I want to get jumped, I have to call the AAA. I mean, it's... <laughs> <laughs> I'm lucky, because I don't know about your sex life, but I imagine, you know, because you're a very attractive man. Well, that's not so your sex life. But you are very attractive, because yes. it's your show. You are... <laughs> You're very smart. Very smart, too. I mean, I'm lucky, because I know you're 14 years now. Yeah. I'm lucky if I had sex once a month. Yeah. And I'm even luckier if I had it with a partner. <laughs> with a partner. Okay. <laughs> and that's because... Why is that? I have no presume. <laughs> No presume. Yeah. That's See, one of your. Uh... That's where, uh, and Dolly Parton and I now have become very close, right. which is, which gets me crazy because she's got oh, yes, boobs. She oh, she is. God, she is. Jug oh knows. I mean, I Jug can't. She is healthy girl. Yeah, healthy, yeah, and very nice. Do you know her at all? Of course. Yeah, yeah, and people think she she should have children. You know, 
Yeah, she breastfed them, they exploded. Isn't that... <laughs> Poor children! Pow! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got to stop here. Right. Just, just relax there. <laughs> I didn't know that at all. They boom, boom, one after another. Tragic. Where are the kids? <laughs> <laughs> all right. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Stay where you are. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. We are back. <clears throat> My next guest I have not met. She is uh, Japan's best-loved television personality. She's the host of three different shows that draw at least 35 million viewers. Oh. And this is her first appearance on American television. Would you welcome, please, Tetsuko Kuro Yanagi. In Japanese. Really? She said, Kombawa. Right. Wonderful. Thank you very much. And I'm very happy. This is the first time I appear on a um, famous American television show. I'm glad to see you. Konnichiwa. I'm so happy. That's... <laughs> if it hadn't been for Shogun, I would have been completely lost. <laughs> um, could I have something that you had it before? Would you like that little foot? We, have... we have a little footstool I'll oh. put out there for you. How's that? Automatic. Automatic. Yes. <laughs> it, it's a pleasure to meet you. Very nice, but unfortunately, someone uh, pronounced my name. You did very well, and uh, very beginning you did very well, but when you taught him, was wrong. Oh. <laughs> I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> Tesco, Kuro, Yanagi. Yanagi. You're, I was right the first time then. Yes. The first time he did the first yes. time beautifully. You corrected me, and I was right the first time, and as is often the case. <laughs> well, have a nice weekend. Uh... Uh, Kuroya Nagi means black willow, black willow tree. Yes, you're very lovely. Oh, thank you. Yeah. You, you refer to in Japan as the the Barbara Walters of Japan, I understand, which is quite a compliment. <laughs> but you mean compliment? Well, that is. In some circles, that would be considered a, a compliment. She's a very popular broadcaster here in America. Yes. Um, and I know you're extremely popular in Japan. You do three different yes, television three. shows. I know it is very unusual here. Yes, it is. Um, I have my own daily talk show, Monday to Friday. And I have Thursday evening, uh, best, the best of ten, which we call. This is uh, the ten top singer that week. I do MC. Good. One hour. And also I do with the symphony orchestra in Friday evening, 7.30. So you have three completely different, different shows. And three different type of viewers. I see. Some, of course, and viewers are mixed, but... Right. On Monday night, do you run the best of Tetsuko at all, or a repeat? That's kind of a local joke here, and it doesn't, doesn't tra translate too well. This does not leave you much time, uh... No, I, I do uh, very well. My manager is very well <laughs> organized, so I work uh, four days a week. How many days you work? Uh, it's just almost almost every day. Oh, but <laughs> almost every day. No, I work uh, Tuesday uh, through Friday. But you do Monday. Um, Monday, I, uh, I I don't work on Monday. Oh, why? Well, I, I, you've never met Bombastic Bushkin. Uh, he is my manager. Oh. And uh, see, we've been doing this show for 20 years. I, I know. Uh, congratulations. Thank you very I much. I heard about it. Yeah, and after 20 years, the five days a week got a little too much, so oh, yes. we, we go back. How, how long is your show? Uh, 45 minutes. 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. And you do that every single day? Yes, but I tape. Yes. Mm-hmm. What kind of viewers now? You say you have different viewers for each show. Mm -hmm. The Symphonia, the Symphonic show. Uh, the viewers? Yes. Uh, my talk show daily, uh, it's afternoon. I do 1.15 to uh, 2, so uh, housewife right. and the doctors who ha working at home and um, merchant. Merchant. And the taxi drivers <laughs> or who is working in the bar because they wake up at, at the midday 
So, um, these people. And my, uh, the best thing, this pop show is young people. Right. But, but you mentioned three, 35 million people watch every Thursday evening. It's a very young generation to maybe a hundred years old. <laughs> and my symphony is people who like uh, classic music. That's incredible. But, um, do you interview when you have American personalities in Japan? Do they come on your show? Yes, when they are, if they have a good timing with me. Right. So very recently I asked Miss uh, Brooke Shields. Brooke Shields? Yes. Yes. And Mr. Yulbrina. Yulbrina? Yulbrina. And the pianist Alexis Weisenberg. Or um, Ali McGraw. Mm -hmm. Um... Um, Ali McGraw. Right. <laughs> Rock. Who, are they very? Po are those the most popular? Yes. Personalities in Japan. Yes. And also Olivia Hussey. Olivia Hussey uh, uh, came with uh, her Japanese husband. Uh -huh. mm. Would they know who I, I was in Japan? <laughs> no. <laughs> It's that, that Eastern diplomacy that is always good. Oh. Uh, York, no, of course they wouldn't know because my shows are not seen there at all. But you are very, um, people told me that you are very famous here. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm so happy to be here. All right. Do you have commercials on your show? Do you have to stop every so often and, and uh, sell yes. products? Yes, uh, my talk show and my, this pop show. But uh, the other one, Symphony, is uh, an age case like a BBC, no right. commercials. Well, we have to stop here for a moment. Oh. And then we'll be back, all right? I'll be back. Yeah, we'll Great. be right back. Say where you are. Welcome back. I was complimenting uh, you on your... Uh your English, you learned that, uh, you say, at a British high school in... Yes, in Tokyo, but I didn't study. But I just listening what the teacher teaching me. You do very, very well. Thank you very much. And I lived in New York one year. In New York? Mm. That's before you uh, had your television shows, or this is... Uh, during. I decided to have a one-year vacation. Yeah. And I lived there, and I studied little, and I watched people. Many American television shows are seen in Japan, are they not? Uh, television shows from this country? Are they not seen in Japan, some of our shows? Not this show. But oh, it's like, uh, like... Like Dallas or some of the... Colombo. Now that's yes. seen and they have yes. to... Yes, many, many. I'm sorry. If I say many, many and if we, we don't see yours, it is... No, really that's bad. all right. No, that's... I'm sorry about the many. No, I understand. Many. Our show is very difficult to translate. Yeah, exactly, that's why, yes. Extremely difficult. Sometimes mm -hmm. even difficult Because when here. you're talking, you're both, when you're both talking, I think it, it's very difficult to translate in yes. Japanese. Now, Joan was just saying, she leaned over to me and says, you know, she's not married. Mm -hmm. She's so pretty, we have to fix her up. No, you see, <laughs> why do women always assume if somebody is not married that they should be married? I know what big people call matchmaker. Matchmaker. Yeah, that's what I am. Oh, you're doing? I would love to put people together. Do they? Do Will they you have... find somebody then? Somebody great for you because you're oh. so pretty. Oh, thank you very much. Do they have you, matchmakers I... in Japan? Oh, yes. Uh, what we call go between. They carry uh, pictures and uh, show. Yeah? Uh, yes. Well, that's interesting. Like that. Now, this little, little book you have, it's an illustrated book called Toto Chan. Yes. Is that right? Yes. And it's called The Little Girl at the Window. This has to do with your, your childhood? Yes, only six years to nine years old. I graduated a very, very unique primary school, and the principal was beautiful. He trusted children, and he kept telling me, you know, you're really a good girl, right. because I expelled from another school when I was six years old. Why were you, why were you expelled? <laughs> it's a long story, so I want you to read it. But, uh, <laughs> but um, I was interested in many things. Mm -hmm. So the first day I went to school, I opened the desk hundred times, because my desk, at my home, my desk, the desk opened this way, but school opened this way, so I was very happy. So a hundred times the teacher was very upset, and don't open without... Um, 
purpose, without uh, a reason. Fat reason. Mm -hmm. So I, I put everything inside, and when I need, uh, for example, write A, then pencil, a notebook, and everything, then, then close, <laughs> like every time. So she was very upset. But next day, I satisfied. So I was at the window, and I was looking outside, and especially I love uh, street magicians. So I talk to them, and uh, when they come in, then the street was just uh, beside the, our window. So when the street magician coming, I said to the other student, uh, pupils, come, come, they are, they are there. So they, everybody come to the window and they shout what we call Chindonya-san, street musicians. Mm -hmm. Chindonya-san, then I, I ask them to play. So they play. So music, music one plays. So all this time, teacher has to wait like that. <laughs> so um, every day, many things. So uh, she said to my mother, please take your child, we cannot. Uh, that's why. Then I went to this next school. Then this is the one. And this principal, the second one principal, kept telling me, you're really a good girl. All the time he kept telling me. So I thought I really, I, I thought I'm a very good girl. So I said, yes, I am very good. But later, when I grown up, grew up, then I remembered he said, you really a good girl. Originally you're a good girl, something like that. Right. It means I looked not good, but he found something something good in me. Right. So, but I, I, I thought I'm a good girl, so it's helped. Otherwise, I'll be too much, very much, you know, In drop trouble. out. Drop out. Yeah. So, um... That's what the story yes, is about. And, uh, you know, um, the, my classroom, it is so difficult to speak in English, I'm sorry. Oh, it's That's all you do, you do beautifully. Um, I, I'm a very uh, popular for quick talker in Japan. Why don't you do it in Japanese? There's a large Japanese population here in California. Aha, uh -huh, but you don't understand. I might be able to get the the, oh. the attitude, the feeling. Ah, then um, I'm a teacher.